Straight grimy, T minus, and boy wonder. Battle of the Beatmakers was the entry point for the producer that would later be known as T minus. During his battle days, he was known as T bags, or simply bags. He always came across as a very low key guy who was more comfortable letting his music speak for him as opposed to being the celebrity type. From day one, he has been on that smooth, melodic type of production. So when he entered his first couple beat battles, naturally he registered for the smooth category. But it wasn't a walk in the park. He faced a disappointing loss the first time he battled, but he learned from that loss, brushed up on his skills, and came back three months later to clean house. It was common for producers to attend as onlookers just to study, see what the competition was like, and as a result, register and come with their A-game for the next battle. For BBM3, there were many standout producers at this battle in all three categories, but for this specific smooth category that Bags was in, it boiled down to himself and one of the grimiest battle producers, Giggs, who switched lanes and decided to jump into the smooth category. They battled back and forth and had to draw a couple extra beats to satisfy the judges and crowd, as this was clearly a clash of two titans. There was a lot of mixed emotions to the battle, and some felt the judges were leaning towards giving Giggs the win, but a portion of the crowd was cheering for Bags. So after much deliberation, it was finally decided that the win went to Bags. I didn't know it at the time, but it was later revealed that Bags and Boy Wonder were close friends, lived in the same area in Ajax, and even co-produced music together. They were a part of a collective known as Straight Grimy, which consisted of MCs and producers. Over the years, I would see how they definitely complemented each other's style. I would often end up with a bunch of beat CDs in my car after each battle, as producers would sometimes intentionally leave me their beat CDs, placing me in like an A&R role. They figured leaving their beat CDs with me would somehow help them. In other cases, producers would just carelessly leave their CDs lying around, so I would drive around listening to beats by a number of producers, including Bags and Boy Wonder, often with words like copyright by Boy Wonder or copyright by Bags or something to that effect, usually written on the CD. At 16 or 17 years of age, if nothing else, they had at least learned the basics of trying to protect their beats, as artists were constantly hitting them up for free beats. At one point, Boy Wonder's email address was no underscore free, underscore beats at hotmail.com to try and shake off the shitload of rappers always trying to get free beats from them. Although Wonder had successfully conquered the party beat category in his debut battle, his forte was clearly his Grammy beats, which he was highly regarded for around Toronto. And since Toronto was dubbed the screwface capital at the time, Grammy beats were the order of the day. However, he would revisit his party beats legacy in future years, once he became a diamond-selling producer. The alchemy of mixing Boy Wonder style with the smooth melodic overtone of T-minus style is a powerful combination that we would see fully manifest in the coming years, beginning with the smash hit Replacement Girl by Drake featuring Trey Songs. This is the first time the world would get a visual of the dynamic production duo. Although not a formal production team, they were quickly becoming cemented in Toronto hip-hop history as music producer legends.